Welcome to Shorty Supercoach. Let's take a look at the Saints. As you can see, the uh, the bedroom is in... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Too short, my bed. That ain't going to be a good look. I swear to God, I've got a cold, and it's it's not COVID. Or is it? Unsure. Anyway, welcome to Shorty Supercoach. Going to take a look at the Saints today. And uh, as I was saying, the bed is looking pretty average. I've come back from Brisbane... And I'll be honest, I'm just suffering a bit of those post-holiday blues, you know. Just, uh, you get away for a bit, New Year period, you just get used to hanging out with the boys every day and just having a drink when you feel like it and doing whatever you want. And, uh, you just got to get back in the swing of things when you get home. But, um, I'd love to hear you guys, or how you guys are going. I think the Saints are one of the more interesting clubs I've actually taken a look at. So, feel free to give me some of your thoughts and, and let me know what you're thinking on these club-by-club -club previews look if i'm honest they start to drag on a bit i i do it every year I, I i like doing them um but they just take a long time i'm dying to get into some you know sort of actually get the the laptop out screen record actually look at some players scroll through each line sort of get some real more precise player by player stuff so let me know if you still like seeing the clubs uh, previewed individually I'd really like to know your thoughts. Um, but if we take a look at the Saints, I mean, the, the out-and-out -out lock is pretty obvious, and that's Jack Steele. He's an absolute superstar. Enough said for him. I mean, he's just ball winner, leads that midfield. Started kicking some goals too, so he's a star. But one of the locks I wanted to mention that's, you know, maybe a bit different to what you might expect is Rowan Marshall. And, and look, at this point in time, I'm really thinking Grundy and Marshall for mine. I just think Marshall at that price is just too good to weigh up or, or say goodbye to. Um, I know it's it's not cheap per se, but for what he can do, I think he's a definite three-figure average. And he just copped so many injuries last year. I think that clearly that affected his score, but even just... He never really got going. And when he did, he was great. And look, we might just want to see how Paddy Wright is going as well because when they share it, it's not like he scores poorly, but we know most Ruckmen score better when they get more opportunity as a sole Ruck. It's just how it works. So Marshall is a guy that dominated when Ryder was missing for a fair bit of last year towards the back end. So maybe we just want to monitor that before. But he's one of my favourites and I'd love to start him. So we'll just have to wait and see. Now the breakout and the risk are quite interesting and kind of intertwine a little bit. The breakout contender for mine is Hunter Clark. And, and he's a favourite of mine. He sort of goes in that category of blokes Shorty really loves but have never done anything just yet. But he's at 400000 and he's a defender or a midfielder. And that's the big question. Is he going to be a defender or a midfielder? We can select him as both in Supercoach. That won't change. But what's really going to define it is where he actually lines up and plays. Now, I just feel like he has to start playing some midfield. So this is a classic track there preseason sort of operation. He's got to play in the guts, doesn't he? The Saints are struggling. They need more in there. I don't reckon Brad Crouch has quite been the guy. He's played some good games. But I think Hunter Clark can damage a bit more than a crouch. And, and they lose Dunstan. And not that he was getting huge opportunity. But I just feel like surely the time is now that he gets a bit of a chance. And I know his averages have, have probably teased us for a little while now. But I truly think that he's a guy that can average 90 plus at some stage in his career. The big question is, is it going to be this year? So... This is definitely one where we're just looking to see if we get a change in role. So... Watch that one closely. And the risk, like I said, it kind of intertwines, and that's Jade Gresham because he comes back in the mix. So maybe a few of those pros to Hunter Clark getting in the midfield that I just mentioned could be offset by a Gresham return. Now, he's at 300k, just a midfielder. So that makes it awkward. We shouldn't be surprised by that, but it, you know, it sort of does make it pretty awkward when they're sitting there 300k, 299, whatever he is, and you're just a mid. Now, he's coming back. Again, from a major injury, he played just the three games. And he gets that price a little bit off the back of, I think it was 20 he scored in round three, which brought his average under 70. Now, he started the year pretty well. He, he had 28 and 29, I think, banging inside 50s, left, right and centre. Um, I think he scored an 82 and a 105 or something like that. Not amazing numbers, but he was playing good footy. And 
I think certainly from a football point of view, I think he's one of the Saints' most important players. He's one of the point of different guys around the midfield. You know, he actually attacks the stoppage with some pace and has that breakaway speed, which as good as Steele is, as good as Crouch can be, maybe even Hunter Clark would fall into the same category and probably Dunstan suffered a little bit off the back of that as well. Seb Ross is another one. So they've got a lot of those same type of mids. Now, that's why I think Gresham is so important. I couldn't really see us picking him because there is such a risk. You know, in this category, I often it is... They're in there because there's a risk, but there's also a big reward potentially. But for this one, I just think the risk would be too much. And he's never really shown the ability to go massive. I mean, I think not only would we be hoping that he returns to full fitness, but we'd be hoping that he has career best numbers. So look, wait and see. Watch him closely if you're a fan. I'm looking forward to him getting back because he's great to watch. But um, I don't know if we're going to select him. But hey... He might float your boat. So, look, I'm, I'm not even going to go to the no chance because the no chance for my side started to piss me off lately. I, it's, I've started to feel like it's a bit irrelevant. I wonder if you guys are thinking that out there. But that'll shorten the video up a touch as well, which can sometimes be handy. So, look, if there's a bloke that's no chance for your side that I overlooked, let me know. But more importantly, what do you think about Clark, Marshall, and even Gresham to a lesser extent? But I, I'd love to hear your Hunter Clark thoughts. You know, what can he average? Where will he play? If there's a Saints fan out there, Jono, you're the guy that normally um, has that St Kilda intel. I'd love to hear it. So we'll be back again with a uh, Sydney preview in a moment. Um, so hopefully um, I can smash a couple more out today and we can wind these up by Thursday, Friday, and then we can absolutely smash into some some real uh, precise stuff, some more, uh, well, get the old team picker out. So that'll be a bit of fun. Cheers.